Hey gang, it's Monday, January 29th. I'm in Dallas now. You see my breath? It's like in the 20s. We got a big ice storm coming in tonight. So a couple of days shot, I'll be editing. But do you guys remember the date, November 22nd, 1963? Do you remember where you were? Those older folks like me, I think I was two or what, three years old, not turning four yet, but anyway, a very infamous day in our history, in our country's history. That was the day, that, of course, that JFK was shot by Lee Harvey Oswald. And it was a day that it, it shed probably the biggest tear, tears from people of all races, all parts of this country. Uh, most everybody loved JFK including me. I'm a big affectionado of JFK history among my Western Frontier and World War II stuff, but uh, we're going to be visiting the grave of a World War II veteran whose name is not often mentioned that was connected to this whole incident of the assassination. And this veteran who fought in World War II, paratrooper, was a Dallas police officer here. J.D. Tippett, who was also shot after JFK was killed in the pursuit, if you will, by Lee Harvey Oswald. So let's walk to his grave and I'll tell you a little bit about J.D.'s background growing up in Texas. He was, a, he was a good guy. So let's take a walk to his grave. We're at the Memorial Park here. There's not a lot of Gravestones, as Memorial Parks are, but let's have a nice walk on this ice cold day. Now, JD was born near the town of Anona, Texas. That's in Red River County. Many say that JD stands for Jefferson Davis, but many say that is not really the fact. It, is said that he was named after a character his father had read about in a novel, someone that he admired. J.D. was the eldest of seven children. His father, Edgar Lee Tippett, his mother's name was Lizzie May, Maybug Rush, her maiden name. Now the Tippett and Rush families were of English ancestry and very interestingly, According to the records, their ancestors immigrated to Virginia originally from England around 1635. That goes way, way back, if that's true. In the fall of 1939, when J.D. was 15 years old, his family moved to Baker Lane, a stretch of road out in the dust about six miles southwest from Clarksville, Texas. And there he went to a high school called Fulbright, Fulbright High School. And he would only attend through the 10th grade. He had to drop out. He needed to help the family on the farm. It was a lot of work out there. Now, growing up in this rural Texas farm, he did all the things that young boys did out there, hunting, fishing. He was good on a horse. But then World War II commenced December 7th, 1941, with Pearl Harbor. His father left to work in a war plant in Hooks, Texas, left JD behind to operate the family farm and in 1944 the family moved to Birmingham, Texas to be near the war factory where dad worked and that's when JD enlisted into the army. Basic training at Camp Walters, Texas. He volunteered for paratroops. He completed airborne training at Fort Benning, Georgia in late 1944 and then he was shipped to England. J. 
JD was assigned to the 17th Airborne Division as an infantryman and in January 1945 he was assigned to the 513th Battalion Parachute Infantry, 17th Airborne Division and there he was thrown into combat. On March 24, 1945 he parachuted with the 17th Division across the Rhine River near Eidersfort, Germany. He was awarded a Bronze Star Medal. When the war ended in 1945, J.D. was sent home and honorably discharged, came back to the family farm in Red River County, Texas. December 26, 1946, he married his high school sweetheart, Marie Frances Gasway in Clarksville, Texas, and they would have three children, Alan, Brenda, and Curtis. He would work for Sears there in Dallas, actually, but shortly thereafter, he returned to Red River County. More years of farming in 1952, he came back here to Dallas where he found a job with the police department in the city. His badge number, 848. And they say that J.D. really took to working on the police force naturally. He soon developed a special talent for spotting troublemakers. His fellow officers would remark about his instinctive ability to spot a suspicious person who was about to cause trouble. Now, in 1956, J.D. received a commendation for using this ability to actually kill a gunman in a bar before the man could kill some police officers. He had that preemptive, that preemptive talent that kicked in. So we come to the fateful day, November 22nd, 1963. Officer Tippett was working his normal beat in South Oak Cliff section of Dallas. And of course, that's at the time when President Kennedy was shot. Within minutes, word went out to all police officers of the description of Lee Harvey Oswald, as we know, who killed him as the possible shooter at, the, at that point. Now, Officer Tippett is rolling down in his police car, right? He's rolling down the street and he's, you know, he's on alert. He's looking for, you know, and with his ability, he spots Oswald walking down the street, pulls over, looks out the window and he's like, hey, he starts questioning him. Now Oswald's getting nervous. And as, I think as I recall, he got out of the car to question Oswald, to confront him and Oswald knew what was going to happen, so he shot Officer Tippett. I think it was four times. Killed him. Killed him instantly. Killed him instantly. Well, of course, we all know what happened next. Most of us who follow the history. That ticket agent was actually tipped off by someone that had those same skills those perceptive skills as J.D. Tippett. His name was Johnny Calvin Brewer. He was a manager at the shoe store located just nearby the theater. And he had heard the news reports about the assassination and that officer was killed. So he was watching and he saw a man whose behavior seemed a little suspicious and walked into the foyer of the shoe store there. And when the police cars went by, he looked in the window and he was acting scared. The sirens blaring by and the last squad car that passed, that's when Oswald, he said the man stepped out of the store and walked in the direction of the movie theater. And then he saw him go in there without buying a ticket. So he followed him and he's the one who had alerted the ticket office, the woman sitting there. And they call police. 
He still had the 38 caliber pistol on him that he used to kill JD. Ballistics tests would confirm that. It was the same gun. Officer JD Tippett was laid to rest here on Monday, November 25th, 1963. A lot of people here. That was the same day that President Kennedy was laid to rest. There were over 1,500 mourners at the funeral that came. And this is where J.D. Tippett rests, right here by the road. What a hero. What a, a, a World War II vet, guys. Right here. And you can see the, the blue. You can see the blue. It says, heroes live forever. And that, is, that is true. Heroes live forever. J.D. Tippett, devoted husband and father. September, you can see his birth date there, 1924. November 22nd, 1963, and you can see the, you can see the badge. So we're gonna put a, a penny here. That is a sign of respect. You will see that at graves, many places. It's a sign, it's just a sign of respect, especially for veterans. A penny is a sign of respect. And then we have the nickel, the dime, and the quarter signifying higher levels of those that knew the veteran. And when you get to the quarter level, it's supposed to stand for that you were with him when that veteran fell. J.D. Tippett, thank you for your sacrifice, sir, and you're a hero. You're a hero to us all. J.D.'s wife did remarry. His widow, Marie, she married police Department Lieutenant Harry Dean Thomas, 1967, four years later or so. JD was given a posthumous meritorious citation and medal for valor from the Dallas De Police Department. So that's him. He will not be forgotten. Rest in peace. J.D. Tippett.